with us this morning to analyze the situation at Fukushima and the prospects for success is Chris Kadomsky. He's the lead nuclear analyst at the Bloomberg division that covers energy markets, Bloomberg New Energy Finance. Uh, Chris, thanks very much for joining us this early in the morning because you've been on Bloomberg television a whole lot these past few days, understandably. Uh, l let's start with the controversy. Yesterday, Greg Yasko says the situation is much worse than most people are telling us. U.S. citizens should remain at least 50 miles away from the reactor, a whole lot different from what Japanese are hearing from Tokyo Electric and the Japanese government. In your estimation, who's more right? Is, is, is Greg Yasko right that the situation is worse than we thought? I think so. I have been speaking to um, nuclear power plant operators from the West Coast and got a briefing from them late, late last night and was sort of discouraged by the news that I heard from them saying that the situation is perhaps more complicated, more dire than we had anticipated. Remember what we were hoping to accomplish was to hook up the additional power line to restore power and by restoring power to get the cooling process back under control. So we're right now we're having to do that all by hand, either by helicopter or by right, fire truck. Exactly. So when they hook up the electrical power line, hopefully the next step is that the pumps that are there are going to work correctly. The gentleman that I talked to yesterday suggested that perhaps those pumps may not start working. So even if you go ahead and include the uh, or complete that, you have a situation that we have the power, but the pumps are not able to do what we wanted to do. Let's assume for a moment that they can get the power line hooked up and that they can get the pumps working. How much time do we have? To, neither Tokyo Electric nor the Japanese government is giving us any estimation as to how long it might take to get this power line hooked up. Well, they've been working on it for a while here, and we need to try to get done as quickly as possible, because the quicker we can get water back on top of those things, we can cut the radiation exposure. Cause but, but I guess what I'm trying to get to, and I know you, you have a fairly good idea of, of where this is going, if the fuel rods are exposed to the atmosphere, as Greg Yasko says they are, there's no more water in that uh, cooling bay. How much time do we have before these start effectively to melt down and perhaps to start a fire that would send a nuclear particulate matter into the atmosphere? As far as a precise time frame, I can't give you that idea. It's hard to imagine there. But the key is that we need to try to cover them as quickly as possible. They can, if the situation persists, they're continuing to heat up, and it could be a matter of hours or a day or so before they start. These folks in Japan, and we have to remind everyone that they really are heroes. Uh, there were 50 people, a skeleton crew yesterday. Now they're back up to a staffing of 300 on site. The helicopters, the fire trucks, pumping water. Is it really just a last ditch effort in the hopes of doing something? Is there any likelihood that, that those uh, efforts will have any success whatsoever? The situation was described, the efforts to go ahead and use helicopters uh, was described to me as desperate. The uh, Russians tried to do that in uh, Chernobyl. and With went, lead, too, with not lead. just water. And it wasn't successful. It didn't work for them. So uh, it's a valiant effort. We admire them. There's lead shielding underneath those helicopters, I understand. They're limited to the exposure for 45 uh, minutes, but it's something that's very, very serious for them. Chris, thanks very much for helping us understand the situation unfolding at Fukushima. As you point out, very difficult to say with any degree of precision what's going to happen next. But right now, the situation certainly doesn't appear to be any better. That's correct. Thank thanks you. very much. Chris Godomsky, the lead nuclear analyst for Bloomberg New Energy Finance.